hand was gonna do nothing but bad. <laughs> Stop it. That hand was. <laughs> what? Lisa Frankenstein has been a hit ever since its release earlier this year. Now that it has been out for a while, we have gotten to see some more moments behind the scenes and bloopers overall. So let's take a closer look. <laughs> Catherine! That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Why so funny? My mom died. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into more of these moments, today's trivia question. Catherine Newton stars in the film alongside Cole Sprouse as Lisa, but what was her first film role? Leave your guesses in the comments down below and stick around to the end of the video to find out if your answer was correct. All right, let's shoot. Tavi says you gotta hose the rose. Oh, hold on. The star dropped. I'm not gonna touch. Don't move. <laughs> There's a lot to unfold from this film as Catherine and Cole play two lovers who just don't know it yet. Are we cut? Now listen. No, we're gonna do it. Damn it! Big cut, damn it! It was Diablo Cody who wrote the script for Lisa Frankenstein. Some writers covering the film have theorized that its title is an amalgamation of Lisa Frank, a company known for producing brightly colored stickers and school supplies and Frankenstein. All right, 104 Charlie, take two, A cam, B cam. I know you come from a very repressed culture. Later, Cody revealed that the play words were unintentional and actually the character's name is a homage to a character in the 1985 John Hughes directed film Weird Science. Since like Lisa Frankenstein, it features protagonists who bring their fantasy love interests to life. Come on, dude, we want you to shine, man. We, you need <laughs> you your SAG credit. Money. What am I supposed to do? Just go? Oh. <laughs> it was an experience to work on a film like this from what the cast has said, and Cole actually praises Catherine for her portrayal of her role. <gasps> Sorry, it went into the bowl. Another thing that Cole Sprouse said about the film was in regards to his role was the fact that he worked with a mime as he had no speaking lines to go off of. A heavy physical role. So I worked with a mime uh, in Los Angeles for about three, four months. I'm not a skeezer. <laughs> Keep going, buddy. You're doing it. You're a star. You're doing it. Okay, to help find the soul of the creature, Sprouse worked with movement coach Lauren Eric Salm, founder of Los Angeles Mime Theater Studio. Sprouse says in the production notes, it was an attempt to reach some more universal physical language about how we perceive emotions through gesture, through movement. I'm not afraid of death anymore. Mm -mm. But I don't want to die a virgin. What ultimately convinced Cody that she'd found the right filmmaker for the job was when Williams pitched her approach for the film's twistedly hilarious climax in which a group of characters confront each other in a bedroom and bodily appendages go flying courtesy of a hatchet.
But real quick, make sure you guys check out our Instagram page linked down in the description. There's a ton of interview moments and memes, so make sure you check it out and give us a follow. The scene was originally shot to be R-rated, as were other sequences, but the current PG-13 version of this particular confrontation still captures William's desired effect. It's very impressive how well you were able to dismember a body. I always wondered how deep... And you just... Have you done it before? You don't have to tell me. I, I understand if you don't want to tell me that. It's a little bit personal. This is good. For this film, it was an opportunity for Zelda Williams to make her directorial debut. I think that was the thing that scared me the most, is as far as tone goes, Zelda said, starting with a campy comedy can be really daunting, but I'm very grateful. We had such a good time. <laughs> Costume designer Megan McLaughlin Luster felt an instant connection to the script for Diablo Cody's film. Between the campy teenage horror flick source material and late 1980 setting, Luster saw so much of herself in the script she even turned to her own 80s and 90s wardrobe for the film. Costume designer had a really good arsenal of vintage pieces. I got to wear the coolest weird pajamas. The hardest part was how do you find modern things and make them 80s? All of Catherine's bits are iconic. A lot of it was taken from my personal closet. I used to wear these shorts with the button up and the brooch right here, and then the blossom hat. We have even got to hear what it was like, at least the thought process of how the creature was going to be reanimated. Zelda Williams has established herself as a versatile figure in the entertainment industry, contributing her skills and creativity in various capacities. It's okay. No one's home! Come on! While her most notable role may be voicing Kuvira in the Nickelodeon animated series The Legend of Korra, she's also brought to life to Cassandra Casey Jones in Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Initially, when I had thought about how is the creature going to be reanimated, I had thought it would be a curling iron that malfunctions. But I knew that that didn't really make sense, and I couldn't really figure out how to make it work. I fondly remember those claustrophobic tanning beds from the 80s, and I thought, oh my god. This is it. We get to hear what it was like creating this character and unraveling her throughout the film. But there are so many funny things about reanimating a corpse. I thought about if he starts crying, what if his tears smell <gasps> rancid? God damn it, when you cry, it smells like a hot toilet in a carnival. And it was supposed to be an emotional moment, but then it became funny. And as far as the answer to our trivia question, Katherine Newton's first film role was in 2011 as Chase in Bad Teacher. You can look at his stomach because there's a sound we're adding later of like bubbling. When she gets back to his face is when we would set it off. I was so excited to read a female character that was so unapologetically silly and unhinged and delightful and, and she was still going through quite a lot. But we wanted to turn this around to you guys. What do you think about all these moments? Which one was your favorite? And who do you think was more fun to have on set? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications on for more videos just like this. That's it for today though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye guys!